The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. Every week, Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? Okay. So this week, I've become interested in IRDA. So let's go to the computer. I just chatted about it, but I'll, since it's a split video, I'll kind of run through it again. Um, to 90s, 2000, pre Bluetooth, pre USB universality um, protocol where you could. Um, beam data between like a smartwatch and a pda or two laptops or like you know like a gadget like a lot of gadgets you could transmit back and forth and it used infrared light by the way people in the 90s i mean even now people just love ir like it's so great because it's like you can transmit data you don't need certifications it's safe for the eyes um it's not like a laser and uh you don't need um like antennas it's it's fairly low power because you just need an led and it's, um, you know, uh, low distance, which is good. It's like you don't have to worry about people, like, snagging your data. Um, I think I vaguely remember these were called PANs, like personal area network, because um, it was like one meter. Uh, you know, we, can't, we had WANs and LANs and then PANs. I don't know. It was the 90s. Uh, we also had gigantic pants. Okay. So IRDA is interesting. Um, you do need to have... A hardware layer for there's a couple different layers it turns out there's like the Phi there's the low level like how do you actually transmit the IR back and forth and modulate it and then there's layers above that um, that eventually do get you you are like baud data like like a com port or a serial port or a hardware you are um, so let's start by getting the transceiver so um, you can you know can go on and on there there used to be a lot of these and i actually wasn't even sure that you could still get uh, irda transceiver but uh let's try it. so irda let's just start search for irda okay so search for irda so unfortunately irda is it's you know you're probably gonna find stuff that has it as a sub string but they do have a whole um section of the catalog for irda transceiver so let's check it out so the good news is there is stuff and it's in stock. Um, however, one, one thing I definitely noticed is there are a lot of stuff that isn't in stock. Um, you know, I think a lot of companies, well, Sharp, you know, Sharp is famous for their IR stuff. Zilog, Light On, they all made um, infrared transceivers for the for IRDA, um, but not really. So we only want to look at active and you can see it goes from like 140 down to 16 you know a, a very um big redu uh, reduction another thing i noticed which i didn't realize is there's multiple there's multiple standards for the phi layer the physical layer um which actually made, designed a breakout board and then realized you know actually you know already started looking at this earlier in the week and then realized like uh oh there's actually multiple layers um if we look at this so there's the fire layer, which like to, you know, identifies and talks to things. I'll say if you're communicating with like retro tech, chances are, I think you'd probably be fine even if you didn't have the latest phi. Um, but it's interesting to note that if you want the, the highest distance link range, well, first off, let's, let's only look for stuff that's normally stocking because like, if it's not even going to be available because again I, there's nobody's making new irda chips these are just things that are left over if you want one meter range it looks like there was only if you look on the right ir5 one two zero and two so at the one meter range if you want um the latest phi version which I the other thing that's nice about this is it runs at five volts. It's you know two two point seven to five volts. Um, the TFBS one four seven one one, and there's a lot of these in stock, and so these you know look quite promising. Um, there's yeah, there's not quite sure why there's like a three version, but the TFBS seems to be pretty popular, and I like that it can do one meter. Um, and it's pretty simple. So you, uh, tra you know, you, you wire up, it has a built-in LED, it has a receiver, 
you um, read and write RxD and TXD data from it, and you can also put it into shutdown mode if you want low power, so like you know you you don't have to worry about finding stuff. And like I said, it's five volt friendly. One thing I didn't realize until you know I I sort of looked at this and I did a, a quick breakout design just to kind of get you know the rough the rough layout and 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 pinout working. And also I won't need all the extra resistors and capacitors. After I designed this, I you know and I was like oh I should I should probably read the rest of the data sheet. So even though this says RX and TX, it's not. You are that the module itself is not your. You need to get a separate modulator that takes your data, like eight bit high low, and converts it into the um, IRDA protocol that uses the phi that's created by this IRDA module. What I'm saying is, you can't just like connect your microcontroller RX and TX to this sense, you know, this transceiver and expect it to work, um, especially if you're communicating with other IRDA devices that like already exist. Although you might be able to just like kind of get, if you're just doing point to point, you might get something working. What they want you to do is get um, a separate, I mean, I think of RP2040, like, you know, Pico could probably do it with PIO because you probably need to like do some encoding stuff. Um, you probably like, you know, have bit stuffing and, and you know, like minimum, maximum bit width. But you also need the TIR-1000, which um, I looked up. And this is a UART converter to, um, to, the, to the infrared uh, transceiver. So with this one, you have the IRTX and RX and then the UART RX and TX. And so it does the pass-through. However, you also need the 16-time clock input. So like, as I start looking at this, I'm like, oh my god, it's getting a little complicated. Um, and the clock signal has to be 16 times the baud rate. So, you know, you could generate this or alternatively have an onboard crystal. So I have to kind of actually go back to my my simple design that I did. And um, while this is all cool and all, I have to extend it to add this extra chip that'll let you actually communicate with IRDA using UART. So, um, while this is my, I'll, I'll get to this in a second. Hold on. You also want the separate chip. So there's the TIR 1000. Oops. Which thankfully is stocked at DigiKey and they have lots of them. Um, basically just different. Um, they're all the same chip, but just some are uh, TSOP and some are SOIC. Um, you can pick whichever one you want. They all seem to be in stock and about like a dollar. Maybe this one looks like there's a lot in the marketplace. Um, so, and it's not discontinued. Or you can use the, is it the MCP 2022? Sorry, MCP 2122. Pardon me. Which is also available. They even have a dip version, which just goes to show how long Mongos must have been created. Um, but they do have, you know, 16,000 of the MCP2122. There's probably some, like, there's a lot of probably industry, maybe like medical, maybe business, maybe like interfacing with older devices, IRDA. Uh, transceiver work. So these chips are still available. And these ones are also, you know, about a dollar 80 cents. Um, so like I said, you'll need both of these in order to actually do UART to IRDA transceiving. Um, but if we're going to pick one, you know, can start with this, the TFBS4711 comes in TT, which is up and TR right angle, like same, same chip, but one points up and one points to the side, pick which one. Just want to start and then again match it up with either that uh, TIR 1000 or the MCP 2122. Bob, your uncle, you can do UART to baud rate, uh, sorry, UART at up to 115.2 kilobit per second baud rate to IRDA transceiving so you can communicate with your old, I don't know, GameCube controller, Palm Pilot 3, all sorts of stuff. It's my pick for the week. <laughs>